Well, welcome. And uh, the portion we're going to read today, whenever I come across this portion, it reminds me of my late father, because he loved this portion. He really loved it. And he, he used to quote it in his sermons and things like that. So, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav V'tzivanu La'asok P'ti Re Torah. Amen. So we are. <sighs> so the portion for this coming Shabbat is a double portion. It's two short portions, Nitzavim Vayelach. The question has been asked, how come, you know, all these last portions, portions like there are four parshiot in total that end up, wind up the book of Deuteronomy. And how come, you know, we have all these short portions? Well, the answer given is that we want to make sure that we get those curses mentioned in last week's Torah portion in Kitavo behind us, and that they're part of the reading of the past year. We don't want to start the new year with all these curses, so that the rabbis who's, who worked out these portions of how we read the Torah in the course of a year made sure that these that uh, Kitavo was always read in the previous year, so that we could start the new year on a blessing. The part that we're here in Nitzavim is Moses is coming to an end of these speeches, and I really find these words inspiring, and the truth of them and the promise they hold, I, I think if we could only take it to heart, which of course he tries to get across to us. So, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kichanu B'mitzvotav, V'tzivanu La'asok B'divrei Torah. So, ki ha hazot, for this commandment, ashe anochim hayom, which I command you today, lo nifleiti mimcha, it's not obscure, it's not remote, it's not hidden from you, the lo rechoka hi, and it's not distant, it's not far away, it's not unreachable, the mitzvot that are being given, Lo nifleti mimcha, Rashi. Lo mechusahi. It's not concealed. It's not hidden. It's these aren't secret words, right? Kamoshin emar, and he gives an example. So this word nifleti wants to clarify and get us a better sense of what it means, right? Uh, to deconstruct it. And he gives an example back in Deuteronomy seventeen. Ki yipale. It's talking about a case, and there it's using niflate, right? There's the root, if a case is too baffling. The targumo, and the Aramaic translation is are yitkase, are if it is hidden, right? It's baffling, it's concealed, the solution to this particular legal situation. An example from Lamentations 1. Vaterid plaim. Right? So she goes down hidden, something like that. So, Vaterid Bematmuniyot, right? She goes down secretly in, a, in secret places, Mechusa, covered, Chavusha Betamun, right? Bound, bound in a hidden way. Going on, lo and and again he spells this out. Lo vashamayim he. It's not up in heaven. Lay more to say to consider. Mi alelano. You you don't have an excuse, right? You can't say who will go up for us. Hashamayma to the heavens. Vayikachehalano and get it for us. Vayashmienu ota meaning and relate it to us. Cause us to listen, literally is what it means, asena, so that we can do it. In other words, ignorance, right? We can't do it. So, 
Lo bashamayimi. It's not in the heavens. She'ilu, this is a quotation from Eruvin, the tractate Eruvin, 55. She'ilu haitaba shamayim, because if it were in heaven, hayita tzarich la'alot achareha, then you'd have to ascend after it, ulalamda, and to learn it. Right? That's, you know, asking a lot from you. But commanded, this is something God would command. This would, there would be an explanation, but there's no expectation, right? So let's see if we're still in here. Lo me'ever layami. It's not across the ocean. It's not on the other side of the ocean, Lamor, so that you can say, Mi avor lanu el ever hayam. Who will cross over to the other side of the ocean? Vayikacheha lanu and get it for us. Vayashmi'enu and tell us, let us know about it, related to us. Uvena'asena, so that we can do it. Let's see if there's any Rashi on this. No. Ki karov elecha hadavar ma'od. Because this matter is actually very close to you. Beficha. It's in your mouth. Uvil vavchala soto. And it's in your heart to do it. Interesting. What exactly does he mean there? And I think this has to do with the idea that our personalities, in a way, are split in two parts, right? This is assuming that our psyche is such that we have both a desire to do good and a desire to do evil. And which one is going to conquer? It's like the Indian proverb, right? Or the Native American proverb about the fact that there are two hungry wolves inside each person and which, which wolf wins. And of course, it's the one you feed, the one you feed. And I think this is really true. That is our true selves, is this, this fight that we have inside of us to decide what kind of human being we're going to be. We're given that choice. And I think that's what he means possibly by saying it's really there. We have it inside ourselves. And, and, you know, I think the fact that we start Yom Kippur, this day of atonement, with kol nidre, all our vows, because, you know, when they say the road to hell is full of good intentions, I think that is so incredibly true. That, that we make these promises, or we have these intentions, and then we get distracted. And this is true for all of us. And we have to realize that we have this potential. We don't really have a lot of excuses. So, ki karov elecha, but indeed it is close to you. Ha Torah nitna lachem. So he's talking here now about the Torah, the instruction. This instruction has been given to you, Bichtav, in, in writing. We have it. Go as far as your bookshelf, right? Uva Alpe and orally. Right? This is, I mean, we have people to interpret it. And of course, we have the 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 the, the Torah Shaba Alpe, the oral Torah, the Torah that helps us go through circumstances and deal with circumstances. I mean, it's there. It's there. Uh, there's so many, so much good work that has been done to make sure that we understand it. Going on. Re'e, look, see, natati lefanecha yom, I have placed before you today et hachayim, life, ve'et hatov, and the good, ve'et hamavet, and death, ve'et hara, and wickedness. So this was part of what my dad really loved, right? This choice that we have placed before us. Et hachayim ve'et hatov. Life and goodness. Ze talui baze. The one depends on the other. Im ta'ase tov. If you act righteously, right? If you do what is good, right? You act um, with integrity. Hare l'chachayim. You will have life. The imtasira, but if you choose to act wickedly, behold, 
here you have death. And he says, Scripture explains and con continues to explain just how. How is this achieved? Yes, David. I don't hear you. Yeah, I'm trying to get off mute. Uh, so, yeah. So I'm assuming that that the uh, what we're talking about here is immortality, right? Life and death are are in, in that sense. Yes. Because you know, choose good in life or or you know, evil and death. So I'm assuming that's related to immortality, right? Not physical life and death, or or maybe 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 both. I don't know. I actually think it is both. I actually think it is both. Uh, I don't, you know, normally in, it does not, dis, it, I don't, I haven't read too much where it explicitly talks about immortality, but maybe I just wasn't paying enough attention, but I do think it is talking about, I think it is talking about immortality, but I think it is also talking about life here too. Right? Because, because the way it's stated, you know, choose good in life or, or you know, uh, evil and, and, and death or wickedness and death is, is, you know, to me, it's like, well, um, you know, we're, we're going to die anyway. Right. So, so mm -hmm. you don't really choose, you know what I mean? It's, it's, there was no choice in that respect. It's the choice of how you live your life. Right. Which you've talked about many times. So, that that's, why, that's, so that's, that's why I related it. That's why I was asking if it was related to immortality more than, than the circumstances of our being here. So anyway, Anyway, that's uh, thanks for the the clarification. Absolutely. So I just to just to sort of put a period on this, right? I do believe it does affect our life here in this world, but I also think that the ultimate place is that we do gain immortality, which means that on some levels we are out of reach. We ultimately will be out of reach of all the ills of this world. That ultimately they will not be able to touch us. But I will tell you that I think that when you live a life of integrity, you uh, life is, generally speaking, a lot more pleasant. Because when you lie, okay, when you act falsely, you are constantly having to cover up your tracks with other lies. And, and you see it. And of course, yes, there are people who swallow it, okay, sadly. But I think a lot of people don't. And uh, the thing I've often thought to myself, uh, oh, within the last 20 or more years, that your soul can also be identified as your reputation. And when you destroy your soul, you are actually destroying your reputation. Mm. And, and that's why bad-mouthing is such a dreadful sin. Because when you bad-mouth someone, you are destroying their reputation. So, yeah, uh, it's it's a horrible place to be and to have to delude yourself constantly to try and justify your behavior. I, I, who wants to live that way? You know, it's so much easier in a way to to live to try to be as honest and and transparent as possible not to have too many secrets. By the way, there's a Yiddish proverb that says, the best deligan is the emis, which says, the best lie is the truth. <laughs> so anyway, going, Thank you. of course, my pleasure. All right. So, asher anuchi mitzavcha hayom. Let me make sure, I want to make sure, did I, did I check off the, yes, we did, we did. So, that which I command you today, to love the Lord your God, that it isn't just words, but that it's in your heart and trying to understand what God, you know, we never obviously will understand everything. We don't even understand how much of the physical universe do we really understand as much as we do understand? But to understand that we are talking about the creator, that which created and made possible everything else. That there is this ultimate level, transcendent level of existence that actually 
has a relationship to its creation. And we are part of that creation. And when you think of the level of intelligence that God has implanted in human beings, frankly, to me, every major scientific discovery or even minor ones are all part of the greatness. They all are manifestations of the divine power and transcendent greatness. Yes, we are the ones who have to be responsible for our learning, etc. But even the capability of learning, the intelligence that we have, this is not something we have given ourselves. Yes, we can nurture the seeds, but it's been implanted in us. So, to love the Lord your God, lalechet bidrachav, to walk in his ways, velishmor mitzvotav, and to guard, right? To guard, in other words, to observe, to, to keep mitzvotav, his commandments, the chukotav, and his statutes. The chukim, remember, are those commandments that, that don't necessarily have a rational basis to them. Or mishpatav and his ordinances, those are the laws like thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, etc., all have a basis in society. Vechayita, and you will live. Veravita, and you will multiply, you will increase. Uverachacha Hashem Elokecha, and the Lord your God will bless you. Ba'aretz in the land, Asher Ataba Shama Larishta, which you are coming there to inherit. So, David, that does answer a question because I would say that it would appear that the sentence is talking about the land of Israel and the condition on which the Jewish, you know, the Israelite population is to be there. Mm. So, Got it. Yeah. thank you. Yeah. Good. Asher anochim etzavcha hayom la'ava, right? That which I command you this day to love. Hare hatov uvotaloi. That is what he means. The good is to love God. And quite honestly, all of Jewish learning, really, that you see, all the efforts on the parts of our sa sainted rabbis or our, our ancient rabbis has to do with, I believe, a sincere attempt to put into practice what it means to love God. So, harehato, this is in fact the good, uvotaloi, and it all hangs on this. Vachayita baravita, you shall live and you shall um, you know, thrive, multiply. Harehachayim. So he's defining what he means by life. But if your heart turns away, and you choose not to listen, not to listen, you turn aside, and you bow down to other gods, and you serve them. So when it says you shall bow down, so I put a little note here, what does it mean to bow down? right? Essentially, bowing is an act of submission. It connotes submission. It is, su it is submitting to what one is assuming is the power of these kinds of things. So essentially, when you hold on to something and saying, this is really what life is about, that, in a sense, is bowing down to it. That is, in a sense, and you can certainly, if you live all your hours trying to accumulate, for example, if it's all about money, then that's what you're serving. I mean, we talk about it, about serving the God Mammon. And what's sad is that there are people who do, they worship it, and they will do anything in order to achieve it. And, and this is... Sadly, it's nothing new. It's nothing new. And and to have to re keep relearning these lessons or to see, you know, what's happening now on a on a worldly level, because our responsibility here is to be stewards. 
not not owners. So anyway, for im yifne levavcha, if your heart turn away, and he says, hare hara, that is exactly the wickedness, the evil. Igadetli lachem hayum, I am telling you today, ki avod tovedun, that you will perish for sure. You will utterly perish. Rashi. Ki avod tovedun, hare amavit. And you know something? I mean, I hear this being said in a loving way that Moses is trying so hard to appeal to us, even today. Lo ta'arichun yamim, you will not lengthen your days, al hadama, on the earth, asher, or on the land, asher ata'over ha'itayardain, which you are about to cross the Jordan, la vorshama, to come there, lerishta, to inherit it. I call to witness to you, Hayom, today. Et Hashamayim, the heavens and the earth. Hachayim v'hamavet, life and death. Natati lefanecha, I have placed before you. Habracha, the blessing, v'haklala, and the curse. Uvachart, this, this now is my dad's absolute favorite verse. Uvacharta v'chayim. Choose life, lema'antichia, so that you live atavazarecha, you and your seed, your offspring. Long Rashi on this. Ha'idoti bachem hayom et hashamayim v'et ha'aretz. I call to witness to, against you this day, the heavens and the earth. Shehem kayamim lo'olam. Why? The heavens and the earth, because they endure forever. Uka'ashir Tikra etchem hara'a. Okay, and when the evil overtakes you, when it come, happens to you, you edim, they will serve as witnesses. Sha'ani hitreti bachem bacholzot, that I forewarned you regarding all of this. So, and this it looks like what follows is from the Sifrei Hazinu, Davar Acher, another interpretation. Ha'idoti bachem hayom et hashamayim, etc. I have called to witness today against you, the heavens, etc. Amar lahem ha'kadosh baruch hu Yisrael, the Holy One, blessed be he, said to the Israelites, to the Jewish people, histaklu bashamayim, look, cast your eyes towards heaven, shebarati l'shamesh etchem, which I created to serve you, Shema Shanu et Midatam, did they change their quality? Have they changed their quality? Shema Lo Allah Galgal Hama, did not, in this case, it's, of course, this is ancient astronomy here, but it says, did not the sphere of the sun, right, did not rise, Mina Mizrah, from the east, Veheir Lechol Haolam, and give light to the entire world? just as it states in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, Hashemesh, the sun has risen or the sun rises, Uva Hashemesh, and the sun sets. Look at how it's doing what it's designed to do. Histaklu Ba'aretz, take a look at the land. Shebarati which I created to serve you. Shema Shantan Midata, has it changed its nature? Shema Zaratem Ota, did you plant in it? Did you sow in it? Velot Salcha, and it did not yield, it didn't, nothing grew. Or Shema Zaratem Chitim, or did you plant wheat, wheat seed? Velta Sorim, and barley came up. Uma Elu, and look at these. Shene Esu Lolishar, these are all made. Not so that they would gain any reward. There's no reward for them. For law they have said, and they don't lose anything. There's no reason, you know, no punishment. Imzochin, if they in fact achieve what they need to do, ein mekablin schar, they don't get any reward for these things. For imchotim, and they, and were they to not do the right thing, were they to sin literally, 
אין מקבלים פורעניות, they don't receive any punishment. לא שנו את מילתם, but still, they have not changed their quality. אתם, as for you, שאם זכיתם, because if you in fact do what is right, תקבלו שכר, you will be rewarded. ואם חטאתם, and if you choose to sin, תקבלו פורענות, you will receive punishment. הלכה כמה וכמה. How much the more so do you have to do what is right? You have so much to gain and so much to lose. Compared to all of nature, etc., which does what it's designed to do and doesn't get any reward or punishment for what it does. Uvacharta b'chayim. You shall choose life. Choose life. Ani more lachem. Right. I am trying to instruct you. Shetivcharu that you should choose the portion that is life. That's the choice you should make. Just like a person says, a man says to his son, choose for yourself a nice portion in my property. And he sets him up, this father sets up his son, on the nice part, on the nicest parts, what Omer lo, and says to him, this is what you should choose for yourself. And concerning this, it states, in Psalm, uh, this looks like Psalm 16, Hashem menat chalki, the Lord is the share of my portion, v'chosi, and my cup. Ata tomich gorali, you are the support of my lot. This is the interpretation. This is the quote from Psalm uh, 16. You have placed my hand on the good lot, on a goodly lot, to say, to say, this is take, take for yourself this. So this is where we are going to stop. Uh, and let's see where we got to. Right. Uh, you know, we're so close to the end here. Let me finish it up. I'm going to finish it up. To love the Lord your God. To hearken to his voice. And to cling to him. Kihu chayecha. For he is, or it is your life, the orichiamecha, and the length of your days, la shevet ala adama, to dwell on the land, asher nishpa Hashem lavotecha, which the Lord swore to your forefathers, la Abraham, la Yitzchak, la Yaakov, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, la Tetlahem, to give to them. And this is where we'll stop for today.